So over a billion in career sales after a career in, in design that was international in Asia and other parts of the, the world as well, uh, based in Toronto, Canada, uh, top producer uh, over at Royal Page, Johnson & Daniel for many years. How long have you been there? Uh, over 20 years, right? Or 20 years? 10 years. I've been in the business since January 7, 2011. And I started okay. my career at Johnson. For 10 years. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of sales in 10 years. It is. I just did the math in my head. Congratulations, that's <laughs> awesome. Congrats. <laughs> well, we'll come, we'll come back over to you as well. Uh, let's go, uh, go to our uh, second guest here, Leslie Modell. She's been on with us before. Uh, Leslie always has a lot of energy and always is the voice for New York City and the New York City coming back. The last time we talked, Leslie said, we're going to be making a comeback. You watch. And this is like three months ago. Now you're here. And I have a feeling it's, uh, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, great stuff based on what we just talked about a second ago. So Leslie Modell, thank you so much for joining us again. Great to be here. And of course, uh, you're with Sotheby's, won many awards over the years. I know uh, top 10 in your brokerage in Manhattan uh, for, uh, I guess, a number of years in the most recent years as well. And you just had your best first quarter of your career in sales in New York City when everyone was saying you guys were done. So you're back. We're never done. We're never you're done, back. Eric. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, congrats. And we'll, we'll definitely you. want to hear all about that. So that's amazing. That's been three months since we talked and you broke your record. You didn't think you'd break your record probably. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, we'll, we'll come right back over to you. Uh, I wanna introduce the third guest of ours, uh, Mike Lafito. Michael Lafito, I call you Mike. I think you prefer Mike, right? Mike's, yeah, Mike's fine. Mike's fine. Awesome, awesome. You actually kind of look like where you're at right now. You look like you're, uh, I, I used to work in, in te television radio. You look like you have a radio show. <laughs> like you're in a rate with the background there, you look like in a production radio uh, morning show. I, you know I, I'm saying? Are, you saying, are you saying I got a face for radio? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're actually like the Howard Stern. No, you're, you're the TV version of it. But I do remember people saying that face for radio. Howard Stern actually had a face for radio and still made it on TV. But now he's back on radio, I think. Although he's still doing TV. But no, you certainly don't have a face for radio. Uh, I, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You look like you're a morning show. There you go. You could, you, you do, do you have a podcast? I do, yes, I have right, a podcast, well then, yep. Do you do the podcast right there? I do our podcast, I do a lot of Zoom trainings and, and we got our backdrop, I do educational videos and that's my backdrop for it. Awesome, awesome, all right, well then I knew I, I felt comfortable because I used to work many years for Clear Channel iHeart Media uh, before coming over to Home Residence Home Living. So uh, I've seen many studios, many morning shows and I like your brand, it looks great. Thank you, it looks great. thank you. Uh, and we're definitely going to be talking about that, of course, also uh, at Properties. You've been a top real a realtor for uh, I, 20 years now, right? I think yeah, I got licensed, uh, licensed in the fall of 2000, so. Okay, so tw over tw a little over 20 now, mm -hmm. uh, which is awesome. And you also, of course, do your podcast. You wrote, a, you, you wrote an amazing book we're going to talk about, uh, and you also do motivational uh, coaching, and you do motivation. You do everything. You do motivational uh, summits that we'll talk about. And we'll, we'll definitely uh, sure. also, of course, real estate as the main thing too. So we're looking forward to catching up with you uh, on what's going on in Chicago and uh, you guys bouncing back as well. So thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right. Well, let's go back over uh, to Kevin Krieger in Toronto. Kevin, first of all, is the weather getting warmer? Because I got to think springtime. We, we had some beautiful days. Believe it or not, we actually had a dusting of snow yesterday morning but uh, it definitely seems to be improving outside. So we're right, well, that's over, good. Over double digit temperatures uh, in the next couple of days. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And, and how's everything going since we last talked uh, with regards to uh, you know, the luxury real estate market for Toronto, international travel opened up. So that's a great thing. How's everything going since last time, since three months ago? The market's been incredibly strong really all through COVID. Um, we are currently in a stay at home order right now in the province of Ontario. Uh, which is extended till the third week of May. Um, so all non-essential businesses are working from home. Uh, real estate has been an essential service throughout uh, this period. So we're still functioning. It's definitely not business as usual, um, but our associations and organizations have done a really good job of sort of setting parameters. Um, and you know, agents really have been very understanding of the times. 
we've pivoted a lot, obviously, to sort of Zoom meetings. Um, and we've done a lot of sort of initial virtual showings and have utilized, obviously, technology to better qualify clients. But uh, interestingly, sales are up 97% uh, year over year. We had a very substantial reduction um, at the beginning of COVID in March. And um, prices, we're looking at probably 18 to 21% um, price growth over the course of this year and um, a very, very strong market across all sectors. That's interesting. So you're, you're actually on a uh, stay at home order right now, which is very different than the US uh, situation going on where people are kind of uh, feeling like they can let loose a little more than before now and get out and about. Uh, what's the reason for that? Is it just con being conservative or is there an uptick in numbers that's concerning? There's definitely been an uptick in numbers. Um, in the province as well with the vaccine rollout. Uh, it's definitely been slower than parts of the United States. So they brought the stay at home order in on April the 8th. Um, and the interesting part is at the beginning of COVID there was obviously some major employment concerns. The one thing we've seen is those sort of sectors that drive home ownership have been largely unaffected. Um, most were able to sort of pivot to a virtual or work at home format. Um, we've seen substantial rebounding in unemployment numbers. And, you know, despite the fact that we have exclusively local demand, because um, our borders are still closed, um, we've seen a, a massive run up in real estate. That's interesting. So, uh, so, so you, you don't foresee the uh, situation with um, COVID affecting real estate in a negative manner right now at all? Not at all. We, we're in a position right now where supply has been a major concern um, and really, really limited availability. We're starting to see a bit of an uptick in listings, um, but there's a massive amount of pent up local demand. Our market typically has sort of had three to 5% foreign participation. From what I'm seeing in terms of the calls we're getting and email inquiries we're getting, I think we're going to see a massive amount of foreign participation coming into the market. Um, Canada really, you know, is sort of seen as a, a safe haven in many ways. Um, the Toronto market specifically, based on sort of the multicultural nature of our city um, and the sort of pro-immigration stance our government's taking, I think we're going to see a, a huge shift in, um, in interest to Toronto. We're already seeing the increase. Uh, with people calling about all types of product from condo through to Uber luxury homes. And a number of them are looking obviously at the investment opportunity, but there's certainly a lot of talk of residency opportunities, um, the immigrant investor program, um, and another, a number of other sort of uh, pro-immigration plans the government's putting in place. So I think we're gonna see you know, further increases um, over the next couple of years for sure. And I think despite, I don't know if, if you've read sort of our local media, but there's been talk of a real estate bubble in Toronto since 2000. Uh, the reality is we stress test every mortgage um, applicant at, you know, a five point or 4.79%. They're raising that to 5.25% for the qualifying rates. But our actual mortgage rates right now range from 1.79 to 2.09. So there's a huge built-in buffer um, in terms of mortgage qualification. Well, great, all, 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 great, all great insight. It looks like things are uh, still looking very strong moving forward. We'll definitely come back over to you. And hopefully that was the last snow that you had. Uh, <laughs> Fingers crossed. Year. Uh, <laughs> but you never know, I know, up there. And all, all three of you guys are in cold areas and I am down here in Miami so don't get mad at me uh about that yeah, well. but uh looks like everyone everyone in New York was down here I think uh now they're coming back everyone in New York was everywhere there Pro well Toronto you can't come there right now but I'm sure Chicago had a lot of New Yorkers too but now they're coming back so Leslie we want to hear about the, the the success story your best first quarter ever that's amazing uh tell us all about what what changed the last 90 days Oh my goodness, so much. So um, as you stated, I think when New York first got hit with COVID, I, I was going around saying people were fleeing like rats off a ship. 
I, I've never seen people fly out of a city so quickly in my life. And I'm born and bred New Yorker. So now what I've noticed coming into this spring, because last year we had no spring market, we closed between March 15th and June 15th. Then we reopened and it was a very slow reopening, you know, in person uh, showings. We still were doing a lot by FaceTime touring, by Zoom, et cetera. And the market started to pick up some momentum around, I would say September, October. And then heading into the first quarter of 2021, the market really picked up steam and people were coming out of the woodwork. We still have, as you know, a very low basis for interest rates that's driving the market for first time home buyers and even for the luxury market over three to $4 million in New York and deal after deal at a discount. So let's be clear, when we were hit with COVID, we had discounts as high as somewhere between 15 and 20%. That has come down quite a bit. I think we hit the bottom and now what we're seeing is an upward trajectory of really good numbers. Still great value in New York, still a great time to buy, but no joke, everybody should hurry up because things are definitely moving in the right direction. I am seeing bidding wars again, people overbidding each other, even on the rental market, which was so slow. The rental market is on fire. We have some rentals in our team. You know, some, some of my team members have different rentals at all different price points, 2,000, 4,000. I have one at 18,000. I have literally received 20 calls on my listing for 18,000 a month. And I already have an accepted offer on it. I mean, the guy came oh. from day one, put in full price and wow. took it off the table. And I am still getting, because obviously the leases are out, nothing signed yet, still getting phone calls and emails. So this market is going in the right direction. The driving force is obviously people know there's only one New York, we're coming back. People are vaccinated and I'm double vaccinated, which gives me a much better sense of security going in and out of these properties, going in and out of the elevators. And I think people feel the same way coming into this market. We're on fire, Eric. I think you should leave Florida and come, come to uh, New York. Well, don't, uh, don't miss the bottom. And, and you know what? Definitely, I, I, yeah, I, I love New York. I'm just not a sports fan of New York because I'm a DC sports fan, as you know, but I love New York as a whole, as a city. It's very, you know what I, I, I miss the most about not being in New York is the, uh, the street corner guys doing the, the, the pita bread and the, and the, and the you know, the kebabs. They're those kebabs, I'm, I'm telling you, those guys are amazing. Are it's they back? The kebab guys? The kebab. They're back? They are back. All right. All right. Now, those things are great. I'm serious. I'll send you. Uh, <laughs> but but on, on, a, on a more serious note, um, are you, are, so basically what you're saying is are the people that are coming back to you, is it people that left New York and want to come back? Or is it new people that say, hey, I can move to New York City for the best price of my life. Why not do it now? Actually, both. both. Actually, both. I have okay. coming from the West Coast. I had somebody in last week from La Jolla looking for- Never from New York before. Never, ever purchased in New York they're probably before. That, that, they're probably like, this is the time to do it. Correct. Yeah. Still great value. He wants that park view, either Upper West or Upper East Side, you know, from Fifth Avenue. And- so all excited about that. Then you have your first time home buyers who now can actually afford to purchase studio one bedroom apartments. So they're all excited. And then you have younger people with families that initially thought when COVID hit, I'm going to move to the suburbs. Went out, took some, you know, a couple of months and decided, you know what, that suburban lifestyle isn't what I'm looking for. And they came back to New York. They came back to the city. So I have a lot of different areas of opportunity for a variety of people. Mm -hmm. That's great. And people are starting to come back. Are, are the offices now getting more busy? Uh, people having to go back to their office now or is it still remote? What we're starting to see now, especially in the Midtown area, which has probably been the hardest hit in terms of office space, we're seeing people actually being asked to come back from some of the major firms like Goldman Sachs, yeah. like Morgan Stanley, uh, the law firms, 
they want their people to come back to the office. They're telling them, get vaccinated and come back. We need you. Yeah. you know, and that'll drive real estate too. I'm sorry? That'll drive the energy of downtown and the real estate market. That'll drive the energy of okay. people. You know, New York has that vibrant energy when you walk in the streets. Sorry. That's all right. That off. Another deal, another deal for you. Another deal, another dollar. <laughs> now, the, you know, New York's always a vibrant town. And one thing that you've been saying, people said before, was lost that vibrance when no one was on the streets. So now it's, the streets are getting packed again. People are working again in the city. And that obviously will bring people back downtown. That's you know? going to be, bring people back to the office, bring people back to purchase homes. Yeah. So it will be a win-win for all, right? For the office spaces being filled back up, for people that had left, they're now coming back. And I truly feel by September, we're going to see a huge influx of people that are here and back to stay. Awesome, awesome. Well, we'll come back over to you uh, for more, uh, but congrats, that's great news. Thank and uh, looks like you weathered a storm and you're bouncing back. We knew you guys would. Maybe quicker than we thought too. Actually, so. That's, That's awesome. Correct. Much quicker than we thought. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Now let's go over to uh, Mike Lafito over in his production room, uh, <laughs> where, where, where everything happens uh, for all for all of your different hats. Uh, Mike, thanks again for joining us. Uh, the first thing we want to ask you is uh, we haven't had you on before, uh, and we'd love to find out uh, how everything's going in Chicago and Chicagoland with regard to COVID. Um, and luxury real estate. It looks like your listings are great right now. Uh, so how's everything going and how do you project it moving forward throughout the rest of this year? Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, a year ago, uh, the city was you know, on lockdown, but things have loosened up uh, because of uh, either familiarity with what you're dealing with, vaccines, uh, knowledge, wh whatever it might be. And so uh, I don't wanna say life is back to normal, but by any means, um, but the, the the two different markets, right? The the Chicago downtown market is a totally different animal than the suburbs. So, you know, we do in both. We, I was part of a six point eight million dollar uh, purchase transaction in downtown uh, about a month ago, month and a half ago. Um, but we're seeing a lot more people leaving the city and moving to the burbs. You know, uh, we have a we have a publication here called Crane Chicago Business. It's kind of like the Wall Street Journal for, for the affluent in the Chicagoland market. And for years, they've been doing these articles, the death of the McMansion, talking about these big homes, these big estates. And they've been sitting on the market for years in some of our more affluent suburbs, North, uh, North Shore and Western Burbs. Well, now it's bigger is better in, in the suburbs. Um, the affluent, the upper end price points is the hottest, I've ever seen it. There's a shortage of inventory. People want yards. They want they they want pools. Pools, you know, used to be a coin flip. Whether that is a, is an asset or it's going to hurt a, a list a listing, uh, help an help an agent or hurt an agent sell a listing. It's definitely. I mean, there's a year, two years of of wait time if you want to get us a, a pool in a backyard in Chicagoland. Public pools, you know, were wow. closed last summer. This summer, you know, you got to reserve a spot. So, you know, wow. bigger is better. Uh, the 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 upper end price point is thriving. Uh, you know, in, in the suburbs, that's where we focus. Although we do a lot of stuff in the city as well, uh, but we're we're excited. We're we're riding the wave. I, I do some national training and speaking. I, you know, um, Kevin w went to one of my trainings in Mississauga a few years back, and and I, oh, wow. I hear all these trainers from all these. Excuse me. I I talk to these agents all across the country, and and they're always like, "Oh, market's hot, market's hot," and 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 the Chicagoland market for years for years, uh, especially in those upper price points has been a buyer's market. And I've always been envious of, 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 of those agents in luxury markets where stuff's moving quickly. And, and finally, the Chicago upper end price point, the, the luxury market is, is a seller's market. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince people that are two years away to sell now because yeah. you know, nobody's got a crystal ball what rates are gonna be or whatever, but now it's, it, it's the time. What, what's driving the de de demand? Is it people moving from downtown from condos out to the suburbs or is it people moving in from other markets as well? You know, we, 
U-Haul loves Illinois. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> U-Haul doesn't love Illinois because u hauls delivering people in. They're getting people out. So it's really not a ton of people moving into our state. Um, you know, I just put a home on the market yesterday uh, in my market, 3.95. It'll be a record sale. I live in a town called Wheaton, Illinois. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I called a Pritzker, Pritzker, another Pritzker ca casualty, our governor, you know, like high taxes, our state's in debt. Um, and, and people are just sick of it. They don't mind paying their, their fair share of taxes if they know it goes to things that, that, but when you know, you don't know where it's going and they just raise taxes to raise taxes. That's why people are moving to California uh, and Tennessee. And Florida. And, you know, and, and, excuse me, Florida and Tennessee and tax friendly states, right? I mean, that's, that's yeah. the reality of it. So, uh, but getting back to your question, the people that are staying in Illinois, that are moving out of the city, their C-level executives that perhaps uh, they realize, you know what, our company can work remotely. People don't have to commute down to the city and take the train. They can work remotely and we could still be profitable. I think COVID has changed a lot of mindset as far as business owners that, you know, they, they are uh, being flexible. You know, my multiple listing service that, that I, when I list a home in the Chicagoland market, it's called MRED. They're the fifth largest MLS in the United States, you know, they, their board unanimously voted to allow um, for employees to, to work uh, from home now. And so they were oh, paying wow. high ticket rent, you know, in a nice lush building and they're gonna be downsizing. And, and so I, I think the commercial real estate, that's a whole different animal, of course, but I think you're gonna see a lot of foreclosures and strip malls and various, uh, you know, downsides uh, to what's happened. But luxury in the Chicagoland suburbs is thriving and it's because people want to get out of the city because guess what, if there's another crackdown and, and, and shutdown, you know, they want, they want to be able to have a yard and, and, and they want to have some, some, some peace and quiet. And, and so you can get a mansion at three and a half million uh, in the suburbs and in, in the city, that will get you an amazing condo. Don't get me wrong, but you have a common area. You have the pool, you have the, the foyer, you, you know, you're in those common areas. And during a pandemic, you don't want those common areas. Well, it sounds like you were the opposite of what Leslie Modell wants. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to each their own, I guess, right? Well, no, no, I'm joking about that, but, but Le 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 Leslie, Le 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 Leslie's the condo, you know, the New York City. I think uh, you're absolutely, uh, I think there's obviously a big, big push towards uh, from the downtown areas to, uh, to the outskirt areas for sure. I think the problem that uh, a lot of people found is an inventory issue. Um, I know the Hamptons as an example for New York, there's just no more inventory in the Hamptons. So people that were leaving now are coming back because there's no, there's no options. Uh, do you foresee uh, inventory issues moving forward in the suburbs? I know you mentioned to get a pool is very hard, uh, but overall inventory issues, how do you see the inventory moving forward? Yeah, I mean, inventory is definitely, uh, there, there's a scarcity in inventory. When I'm marketing a home, I'm looking to see is there a gap in the in the price point, and and I'm getting premiums just because there, there's literally gaps. You know, using an example, you know, one five to two five. You know, I, I put a home on recently at three million dollars where it could have been two two five. You know, to two five, but literally it was nothing in that gap. So we went on at three, and we've gotten tons of traction. So I definitely think you know big cities will bounce back. You know, Chicago will bounce back. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's as uh, as limber as New York, so to speak, because of what, what's happening. But I know, you know, there's a lot of people leaving uh, the city of New York for the same reasons that people are leaving, you know, Illinois. So, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can we can get you know we can get people back, and and uh, it's a great city, it's a great state. It, uh, you know, we have all the seasons. We don't have the uh, 90 degrees like you probably do right now, Eric, but. Um, it's very similar to Toronto, very similar to New York that way. Uh, it's a central hub. People can get here and um, it's a melting pot of culture as well, which is great. The Monsters of the Midway, of course, uh, the 85 Bears, the best football team uh, still. The Buddy Bears, Ryan, the best Buddy defense Ryan, ever. Defense. The best defense ever assembled. I, was, yeah. I went to a game that year when they beat the Colts. It was after their Monday night loss against the Dolphins. I went to that game. Walter Payton had 100 yards. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah no, I, I listen. I, that team was in the fridge doing the dance. Walter Payton, 
Jim McMahon wearing the headband about yeah. Pete Rozelle. Now, yeah. are, you, are you allowed to talk about, I know you work with celebrity clients uh, and athletes, are you allowed to talk about specific Yeah, so I'm or? under NDA on some things. We just helped okay. a big time um, Chicago Bears player. Uh, yeah. I just helped two coaches. Uh, you know, coaches are a lot like, uh, you know, players. They get traded. You're not players. You know, coaches don't get traded, but they sign right. in the offseason. So fired. I just help them. They get fired. What's that? <laughs> What's that? The coaches get fired and they, they, then they get the next job. Yeah, they get fired and they get the next job. So we just helped two coaches uh, recently. And um, so, so that's, you know, that we, we, we work with buyers, we work with sellers. Um, you know, the city is a different animal, just like commercial real estate is different than, than residential. Sure, as a licensed real estate agent, everybody on this training could, could work the commercial market, but uh, it is, you know, it's a specialty, right? And so, uh, you know, I think Leslie will tell you, you know, she's got a specialty in her market and Kevin does in his and, and, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a hybrid agent. I don't have the, a neighborhood expert uh, mantra. My philosophy is have car will travel. And I believe our marketing is, I'll put it up against anybody's. And so I represent a winery three hours outside of Chicago and we represent North Shore, Western Burb City. Um, so we, we kind of encompass the Chicagoland market. That's awesome. And who are the bears gonna pick next week in the draft that you're gonna try and have as an agent? Man, oh man, I, you want? we need a lot. Okay. We need a lot of people here. So we, got we, need, a quarter, pick, sick pick. we need a quarterback, but we need, I hope we go with, uh, we, I hope we go with a quarterback. Yeah. Are they going to have any quarterbacks left by the time they draft? They're going to have to move up. Yeah. All right. Well, Ron Revere is the coach of my team, the, uh, the, the Washington football team. He used to be a bear. Back, I yep. think he was on the 85 Bears team. Yeah, he was a backup on that 85, played a lot on special teams. Good coach. He's got a great inspirational story. Oh, as yeah, does, cancer. Yeah, as does Alex Smith, the quarterback for the, oh, yeah. the team this year. Yeah, that was a great season last season. So, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for noticing my, my, my football team there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll come back over. We'll come back over to you and catch up on a lot of other topics here in a few minutes. Uh, let's go back over to Kevin in uh, Toronto. Um, Kevin, I know we talked a little bit about um, the travel ban going on right now uh, for you. Um, and it, uh, obviously that affects international real estate a little bit and international real estate is obviously a big part of what you do. Um, but it sounds like you're getting around that with um, Zoom events and, uh, and video tours and things like that. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about, about that last time are you still doing uh, virtual tours and able to do sales without any people actually seeing the properties um, internationally? I think the, the one thing we've seen through basically this period is, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, but a Zoom call's not worth, you know, three to $5 million. Um, it, it's certainly a good way to qualify people, but I think, especially getting into the luxury sector, people want to see the real estate. So I think, you know, locally, it's been a great market for people to trade up. We've seen more $10 million plus transactions uh, from March of 2020 until now than we've probably seen in our history. Um, wow. And that includes condo, it includes, you know, homes in central Toronto, um, even two hours north, uh, cottage country, the Muskokas have been absolutely incredible in terms of demand um, and number of transactions. I think a lot of the sort of foreign interest in our market will become more evident once um, borders open and there is some freedom of travel. But we've certainly had the largest number of inquiries I've had in, in my career from uh, obviously many of our um, American contacts. Um, we've had a lot of interest from Europe with everything going on in Hong Kong. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot of capital coming into the Toronto market. So, it's definitely gonna be a growing sector. I think in sort of our highest period, it was about 5% of total market transactions um, were sort of foreign involved. I think we're probably less than 3% right now, um, but I could definitely see that number growing. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would imagine New York, probably your biggest market from the US normally, right? Uh, is that still? The, there's the, definitely a lot of still the case. Yeah, there's a lot of movement between New York um, a lot also from South Florida. Um, we also refer a lot of business sort of back and forth as well. Uh, with relocation though, 
you know, I've had clients from Georgia, I've had clients from Michigan, um, obviously California as well. So Toronto really is the sort of central hub of Canada and a lot of multinational corporations here. So on the, the corporate relocation side, um, really could be coming from anywhere in the US, but we've certainly seen more activity from New York, New Jersey, um, Connecticut, and then definitely parts of Florida, um, interestingly, Colorado recently, and um, quite a bit from California. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, I, so it's up in the West Coast too. What, mm -hmm. what, would you, um, what would you tell someone who maybe lives on the East Coast, the Northeast uh, of the US, and they're, they've thought about buying a, purchasing a home in Toronto, but they're, they're not sure if the time is right. What would you say to them about good reasons that now's a great time and also to take the plunge and, and, and buy a purchase of property in Toronto? I think it's really focused on their goal and objective. Um, for people who are looking for investment, I think this is, 2022 is gonna be the year of the condo. Um, we've seen condo prices now are down about 1% um, year over year, largely because with the borders being closed, we have 30,000 foreign students who would typically be renting in our market are no longer here. Uh, we had a lot of people who were renting that moved back in with mom and dad. Uh, we certainly had renters. Renters obviously are the, the most easily mobile. So with you know, COVID and the various restrictions, we've seen a lot of people who are renting in the core you know, move outside of the city to sort of test it out for a year or two. And the market was flooded with rentals, which a lot of them obviously were condo. Um, some of that product then converted to sales and we had an, a, a large uptick in the amount of available inventory. You know, a 1% decline in price um, certainly I think represents an opportunity when the rest of our market has jumped, you know, 18 to 21%. So if it was someone looking solely on the investment side, I think condos are an incredible opportunity in central Toronto. The reality is based on the stability of our market and the fact that so little of it has been um, affected by foreign interest, I think the freehold market has tons of opportunity. Our average price point across all product types is about a million, slightly over a million dollars. Um, our average detached is $1.75 million. And it's a unique market in that you can own a spectacular property on you know, a sizable lot in a, a very leafy green sort of suburban feeling area such as Rosedale. And for between four and $6 million be literally steps to transit, a 10 minute commute into the downtown core, um, which is really not a possibility in a lot of cities. Toronto definitely is incredibly livable and with very pro-immigration plans from our government, this will be the largest push um, for immigration that we have ever seen. And we've always been a, a very immigrant friendly country. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity, um, both for investors and for people who are looking for, you know, a change in lifestyle or sort of business opportunity. Toronto definitely offers a lot for all. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. With the sports teams, I know they're still playing down in Tampa. When are they coming back up? Do you know? Are they going to finish the rest of the year down here? I, I think it'll really be dependent on where our numbers go and how quickly they can roll out um, vaccinations. I've had my first shot um, because I was in a, a hot spot, but um, there's been a, a lot of pivoting. There's been some conversations recently between our prime minister and your president. Um, so looks as though some uh, additional vaccine supply will be coming. But uh, I think a lot is still up in the air in terms of what reopening will look like and you know how substantial it will be. The biggest, obviously, industries that are affected are anything related to sports and entertainment. Um, restaurant, food service, and accommodation have definitely been the most affected. Yeah. Unless they do Uber, Uber Eats or, or uh, you know, deliver food. Delivery... Delivery is obviously going way up. Most definitely. Uh, yeah, the restaurants that, did, that, don't, that don't deliver. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I know, Leslie, uh, Leslie, back over to you in New York, actually. I know you guys had uh, restaurants at half capacity. Are you now at full capacity? Where are you guys at with regard to your restaurants? Um, no, not even close. We're at, we were at 
uh, moving up to 50%. Okay, um, so you're at half now. But what I've noticed, um, as New Yorkers, we never really ate outside. It was kind of a moot point. You know, you go to Florida, you eat outside. You know, you, yeah. it's got that vibe. We never ate outside as a New Yorker. Really? I've been living here my whole life. And now everybody wants to eat outside. They've mm -hmm. literally taken these restaurants and brought them outside. They've had these makeshift little houses and they perched them on the sidewalk or on the street. Yeah. And it's, it's really amazing to me and so brilliant how the city has navigated these restaurants and how people have embraced this new New York because that's what we are. We're, this is the new normal. And it's, and it's really amazing to me to see how New Yorkers have gotten together and they'll sit outside if it's 32 degrees and they'll freeze to death, but they'll eat their piece of steak and fries. <laughs> I'm included. True, true. I've seen it firsthand. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Now, are they allowed? So, the, is the city working with them on giving them space on the sidewalk? Oh, to, absolutely. To, absolutely. Yeah. So, so they're getting extra space to put up tents uh, on the sidewalk and into the street a little bit because there's less right. people walking around. And and not just tents. I mean, little houses. They have wow. recreated some of these restaurants. I'll send you a picture, Eric. They've literally <laughs> recreated yeah. little houses or the little bit of the restaurant right, the internal of the restaurant, and they've literally taken them and brought them outside. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. Incredible. <laughs> it's truly incredible. And then, of course, they are very socially distant, so six feet between each table. Um, all of the servers are wearing a mask. Everything is really being done really just so. And that's a really good reason we've been able to bring these COVID numbers down, because as you know, a year ago, it was a really scary place. Last oh, March, uh, it was, oh, yeah. I remember I was at a showing and I had a, a kind of a weird vibe and a, weird, a very weird feeling. And it got into an elevator with about six people, which in New York is normal. And a guy turned to me and he said, you know, we're not supposed to be in this elevator together. And I remember I took a breath and didn't open my mouth until I got to the main floor. The door opened, I ran out and I went oh, to breathe because I was so worried. And then literally that weekend, New York completely shut down. And yeah. I mean, everything shut down. And yeah. to live here and to be a New Yorker and to see this happening in real time, was it was very scary. And the way that this city has navigated back I think is so deserving of every award in the book because we've done a really great job of getting the city back on the map. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's been really impressive and it's really good to see because once you see New York bouncing back, then you know everyone's good, you know? That's right, so, that's right. Uh, same thing when 9-11 happened, New York bounced back very quickly and was resilient and that made the country resilient. 9-11, yeah. the financial crisis, we can go, uh, Hurricane Sandy, every time yeah. there's a disaster and there's this fear, right? P the first thing people go to is the fear. Yeah. And I remember when we had Hurricane Sandy and they said downtown was dead. It would never be Tribeca again. It, nobody would ever, ever live there again. Literally within six to eight months, Tribeca was back, yeah. bigger, stronger, and more expensive than ever. <laughs> So, you know, never, never uh, count a New Yorker out or anybody no, 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 absolutely not. live here or have a pied -a here. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, never. Um, a question for you with regards to, and this is a weird question for sure, not one you've answered lately, but inventory issues. You might start having some inventory problems. Do you, when do you think that would be? Or are you, are you are, we so are. You're already having inventory We're there. We're there. You know, so, in, so, in yeah, what would you suggest right now with inventory? What, and what do you see moving forward over the next couple of months? Well, the interesting thing was on all of these um, Zoom calls that I've been doing from around the country and around the world, everybody has the same problem. There's no inventory. Wow. And guess what? We don't either. I was taking somebody, this gentleman from last week with the park view, you'd think there'd be 20, 30 listings. There was seven. And I'm talking about a price point up to $7 million. So it's not a wow. small price point. There is no inventory. So wow. 
segments of the market, obviously more inventory. So let's say somewhere around the two to three million and under, then you start going to a luxury property, three, four million and up. Inventory is shrinking. People who want a four bedroom, there are none. Once you start getting into a four bedroom with, you know, young families up to 5 million, and that's not a small amount of money for a young family. There's no inventory. I personally have clients that are dying to buy a four bedroom apartment on the Upper East Side, and there's no inventory. Wow. Well, that's interesting. So, so, uh, so what do you foresee moving forward? Do you think that the springtime obviously usually brings is a great time of year to put the house in the market? Do you think that there'll be a lot much more inventory when the spring hits? Well, we're in the spring, right? So right yeah. now is our market, March, April, May, going into June. Yeah, true. I every day look, hoping I'm that- I'm in Miami. It's always a spring down here. Sorry. Well, all right. You... Don't brag. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I apologize. I cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, no, at, at the end of the day, obviously, during this market, you would imagine people will put their listings up but things are trickling into the system. It's certainly not an avalanche of new product, which is disappointing for somebody like myself who does have a lot of buyers. I'm primarily a listing broker, but I do have a lot of buyers this year as well. And my hands are tight. I don't have a lot to show them, which you can imagine my frustration, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. And and nowhere to put it. What do you, what would you tell the people that are thinking about putting their house in the market, but not sure? What would you say? I would say, which is what I do say, I'm putting three listings on um, today, tomorrow, and next week. Well, so you, you got said, some inventory. I'm getting inventory. I said, don't hesitate. Put your apartment on the market because this is your time right now. We've yeah. got this, this little sequence of time because once right. we get into the summer, New Yorkers flee. They go to the Hamptons. They no. go to Connecticut. Uh, they'll go to Aspen you know, for the summer. So it's really important to get these apartments, townhomes, condos on the market right now so you can sell them. We just got a, a, a question from uh, someone named Jose who's watching us. Uh, Jose asks, is reverse contingency becoming popular? W- reverse contingency? Yeah, I'm just reading from the screen. What does that mean? I don't know. There's a contingency. I, 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 mean, I know, I what, know what contingency is, is, but what's re- I, that's why I asked. I don't know what it is. There's either non-contingent or contingent, right? On a mortgage. I'm not- Yeah, I've never heard, that's why I asked. Yeah. Kevin- I guess we don't know what the question is. That would be. Well, you know, he might be just talking about, you know, cleaning up offers, right? So, you know, in a multiple offer situation, you know, how how can your offer stand out versus the competition? So clean is better, right? So uh, cash is, is king versus getting a mortgage as is, you know, clean terms you know, having those discussions with the listing agent to determine what are your clients looking for? I I was just in a multiple offer situation this week and having that discussion with the listing agent who I had good rapport with. So maybe she was more transparent with me than the others, or maybe they didn't think to ask, but it's an elderly seller and she ideally wants as much time as possible. And my clients are in a lease till November. So, you know, we put a mid July, which, you know, it's a 90 day close or, or, you know, or longer or shorter if mutually agreed upon. And we basically said, you know, we'll, we'll close whenever. And we went above asking and we went cash and, and, you know, no contingencies in that case yeah. and um, try to make it no brainerish. And our earnest money was a lot more. My guy was going to be cash anyways, but he went you know, really probably five times what other people were offering earnest money. So it just looked so much better than the other offers. I mean, typically in New York, we go non-contingent. I mean, that's just, you know, right away. We, I tell all my buyers, you need to go non-contingent. You know, get it, get a firm approval from your mortgage broker, maybe even get it to get approved by underwriters. And then you know that you're good to go because the kiss of death in New York, especially when there's low inventory is a contingency. Mm-hmm. Sellers would be very loath to accept that. And, and we typically in our market, generally, especially with our inventory, don't have conditional offers. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at an offer two nights ago, um, listed in the sort of just over two, two range. 
uh, 13 offers. We went in at 2557 with a 300,000 foot deposit. And um, despite the fact that there was not a comp to work off of, it sold for $2,905,000. Oh, wow. Um, and all of their offers were firm, no conditions. Um, we don't really have an escrow period. So once an offer is firm, the funds are at risk, whatever you have for deposit. And barring like a, a major title issue that they couldn't provide marketable title, um, those funds then are at risk. So we really never have things fall apart um, from the firm sale period until closing. Interesting. interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Mike, let's go back over to you uh, over in uh, warm, warm springtime Chicago. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about your book uh, and talk about your your uh, your, your show and uh, yeah, your we're doing an event in Napa. Napa. Yeah, t Ooh, tell us about tell us t tell us about your book where we can get yeah. it what it's all about. Well, I've, I've written a couple books. This book is geared towards real estate agents. It's called Luxury Listing Specialist. We help agents increase their average sale price. Uh, by adding more high-end and luxury properties to their portfolio of homes they represent. Uh, we've written books. Uh, I wrote a book for consumers called Marketing Luxury, Selling Your Luxury Home in Any Market. But, uh, but, but yeah, we're also doing an event. We're doing an event in Napa end of May for agents. We're excited about that. We know that uh, a large percent of agents might not be comfortable traveling and doing events yet. And we're totally respectful of that, but there are a large number of agents that are, are, are itching to get back to an event. Remax uh, did an event in Orlando. It was their big R4 conference. They had over 2000 people. So I think uh, that this was in February. So I feel like between the vaccine and, and, and you know people having the freedom of, of travel if they want, uh, you know, there's going to be, uh, I think, uh, a large contingency of agents that are excited about this. So we're doing an AXR winery, full day training, wine tasting included, uh, lunch included. And uh, we're going to tour a couple mansions that are on the market as well. And we got to talk more about how we can help out uh, with that event as well. I know uh, we, we've been talking about that, but definitely, yeah. definitely I think that, uh, that that sounds like a very fun event and a great opportunity for uh, for anyone out there to go to that's an agent or for myself to go there and check out the wine and listen to some great coaching as well. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, and then you mentioned a podcast as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we have a podcast called luxury listing specialist and we interview top luxury agents, uh, getting their takes on the market, you know, so Kevin and Leslie, you guys would be, you know, great guests for that. So, um, agents across the U S uh, Canada, We've had Mexico, we've had Italy. Um, so, you know, getting different takes um, on the market, but we also have key service providers as well that help agents. Uh, so, you know, recently, just yesterday, I interviewed for our podcast, it'll be released uh, a a home insurance uh, broker that he he works with Chubb and AIG, and but he pairs a, a, a buyer with the best insurance policy for their particular needs. So you know, so, you know, brands are important when it comes to luxury, with you know, cars and dining and and wine and clothing. And many times people think they, they need to go through their Chubb, Chubb rep or their AIG. This gentleman's a broker, and many times there's other programs out there that offer the same amount of protection and and he's helping at uh, NFL Hall of Fame uh, player save over thirty thousand dollars on the three properties he owns just on property insurance um, through making sure he's in the right program and not spending money on things he, he doesn't so again that's just one example where we try to raise the bar and educate agents and brokers and team leaders so they can bring more value to their to their clients uh, absolutely. Now, where, where can we find the book? If someone, if someone wants to buy your book, where would they find it? Amazon? It's just like where anybody else gets anything these days, I guess, Amazon. So yes, it's, uh, it's on Amazon, luxury listing specialist, uh, just under 30 bucks. And, uh, you know, if you get something from it, uh, you know, just leave us a, a review. We greatly appreciate it. But yeah, Amazon, it's out there. And where can agents sign up for your event in Napa? Where is their website? Yeah, the website's real simple. It's just luxurydesignation.com, luxurydesignation.com. Everything's there. Uh, we are including a bunch of bonus items, group coaching, so follow-up coaching. We want to make sure agents are successful. 
and I won't bore you with all the details, but you know, consumers, they'll hire a luxury agent or they think it's a luxury agent to represent their home because they play tennis with them or they golf with them and they're likable, but they don't have the experience in the luxury space. And Kevin will tell you as well as Leslie, you know, years of experience and years of maybe even mistakes, you know, help fine tune and craft where we are today. And and there's a lot of agents out there that unfortunately are part-time and they don't know what they're doing and they give poor advice. They think selfishly as opposed to advocate for what's best for the client. They might underprice a home, they might overprice a home, which will cost them thousands of dollars, hundreds, maybe millions of dollars in market time. And so that's what we're really focused on is raising the bar, empowering agents, entail that will protect the consumer. If the consumer has a better experience, then I won't name the discount brands out there, but then, then it helps all of us that are full-time uh, you know, executives, you know, agents uh, that are dedicated to our industry. Yeah, and that's true. As a consumer myself, I can tell you, uh, there's a big difference when you go with your friend or with uh, a top agent. I do feel like COVID has made the consumers smarter about going to the best of the best. And I feel like everyone's kind of geared towards you guys, uh, as opposed to maybe previously, you might think that it's a little easier process. You don't need an expert and you can just go with your friend. I feel like navigating the situation right now is much more challenging as a consumer than it was pre-COVID. Um, but uh, definitely uh, uh, agree with everything that you said there, just being on the other side of it and seeing as a consumer, agents that are great. And then hearing some of the stories of agents that are not, not great, and they set the wrong expectation for people. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kevin going through another, uh, you know, stay at home is a perfect example that, you know, when we went through that at the, in the States, you know, in March and April, there were a lot of agents that hid in their basement, right? They, they didn't, they didn't stay relative. They didn't, they weren't top of mind awareness. They weren't putting content out there. They weren't doing Zooms. They weren't doing Facebook lives. They weren't updating their website. They weren't working on their business. They weren't calling their current clients, their past clients. And, and so, you know, agents like Kevin, they get it. So even though, you know, he's at home, I guarantee you, you know, he's, he's busier than ever probably. And, and, and many people, unfortunately, they do the exact opposite. They have to go to the office to get work done. And, uh, you know, you get, we like, you know, you got to be, you can't be like a dinosaur. Dinosaurs didn't adapt. And so they're extinct, right? Blockbuster didn't adapt. So they're extinct. I grew up a Toys R Us kid. They didn't adapt. So they're extinct. So, you know, we got to be quick on our feet. Yeah. And also, I read the book, add, uh, who, who Moved My Cheese. That's a Harry, good book. I just, I just wanted to add something um, yeah. because I so agree with everything Michael's saying. Yeah. The one point about being a real estate agent is this. Year over year, every year, you get better at what you do. You get smarter at what you do. You learn from your mistakes. And this is the one industry where every year brings a new problem with a new solution and you just keep going, you get smarter, you get better at your craft. And by the time, you know, I see people in my office at Sotheby's, they're well into their 70s and 80s and they are still crushing it. And it's very inspiring to me to understand that this is the kind of business where you're never too old. You get better and better. It's like a fine wine. But so that's what I am right now, a fine wine. I, I, Leslie Modell wine. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, uh -huh. the, the other piece I think really is also network. Um, so, you know, being in the market and really being in the market, I think are two very different things. One thing we're seeing now is certainly limited supply, but we're also seeing a lot of concerns from sellers about putting their properties publicly on the market and you know, having a large volume of showings. So in some areas, you're seeing as much as 30 or 40% of transactions occurring off market. And really it's the relationships with agents that you've developed over you know, years and being on both sides of the table and also understanding who the clients are for specific types of products, being able to pick up the phone and sort of instantly have opportunities available for them and having an instantly opportunities available for your seller clients um, to have qualified buyers through the door. That's the one thing we've really seen with COVID. Um, we became part of what's called a, the Realtor Collaboration Group. And essentially it was a, a very smart colleague of ours came up with the concept of linking all the top producers together 
uh, initially via WhatsApp group until we expanded beyond WhatsApp was capable of hosting. Um, and we're on Signal now. And you know, every week there's a list of off-market properties that are coming available. And there's been a ton of business done within that group of a couple of hundred agents. And we have about 60,000 realtors in Toronto. And you have this group of approximately 200 that collectively are really providing incredible value to their clients and getting transactions done in what has been an incredibly challenging time from a, a health perspective and social distancing. A great idea. I, I'll go ahead, Leslie, sorry. No, I said that's a great idea. Yeah, uh, you know, I've I've put together networks of connection, you know, through Sotheby's, and you know, that's why I have a big referral base. But this is different, and this this is just a great idea, because I do find myself reaching out to my colleagues from different brokerages all the time. So to have that built-in collaboration, it's just a win-win. It, and it, it's totally revolutionary because really we all know who our sort of most active competitors or colleagues are in the market. Um, I've always come from a perspective of, you know, the glass is half full and there's an abundance for everyone. Yeah. So I think really fostering those relationships over the years and now tapping into them in a time where, you know, we can't function as normal um, really, really has been, I think, substantially a huge change for all of us and has really also shifted our mentality. It's been a much more collaborative market to work in. I agree with that. Absolutely. Well, let's go around each of you guys one last time here before we wrap it up. Uh, Kevin, we'll, we'll go back, click, start with you. Any last comments that you want to leave the audience with out there uh, with how things are going for Toronto or just anything in general at all that you'd like to leave the audience with today? I think for anyone looking for investment opportunities, um, you know, looking back in 2022 at 2021, the condo market here really is the biggest untapped opportunity. I think there's a window of time, certainly. Um, for American buyers, we're at a 20% discount um, based on currency. And you know, we're a market that has had stability through the financial crisis, <coughs> through sort of any challenging economic times. Um, Toronto has seen positive price growth. So Certainly in terms of a global opportunity, um, Toronto is one to lean into and uh, certainly learn more about. Great, well, thank you so much. Don't leave us yet because we're still finishing up with the other guys, but thanks again so much for uh, coming on with us. Hopefully next time when we talk with you, uh, there, everything will be open again and there'll be no more restrictions. Uh, no, more, you most definitely there's, there's brighter days ahead for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But like, like Leslie and Mike said, I'm sure you're still probably busier than ever uh, you know, working from home, I would imagine. So we, we the phone are. lines, text, emails, Zoom, et cetera. Definitely. And even listings. We've had um, over 20 listings in the last two and a half weeks. So it's oh, been wow. it's been a That's very, great. very active period. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, congrats. Uh, let's uh, let's go now to Leslie Modell, the fine the fine wine. Leslie, if you were a wine, what would it be? White wine, red wine, Chardonnay, red. Oh, Rosé? Oh, okay. Red, red, cab. A beautiful a cab. A beautiful cab. All right, all right. I like Cabernet. That's kind of, every now and then it makes me tired though when you drink the Cabernet. That's true, but after a long week, I can't it's tell you true, to get a nice sleep. That cab. They actually say that's healthy for you having one glass a night. That's why I do the it. The problem is the sometimes you had a long day and you want two, <laughs> two glasses. <laughs> it's all about the health benefit. <laughs> so, uh, um, so, so, so we love your thoughts as we wrap up here on everything with New York. Congrats again. We're so excited to hear the great report. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. Um, I just like to say that New York is back. And anyone that counted us out, I'm here to tell you, hurry back because we're back. We're on fire again. And there's still great opportunity to purchase at first time home buyer or a luxury property. And New York is reopening. Hopefully soon Broadway will be back and all these other wonderful institutions. You know, people are going back to museums. We're wearing a face mask. So our culture is coming back. And once we get up and running, this market will be right back at that high end and that high end number. And once we are able to get some more international flow, 
the condo market will be on fire as well. So come back, give me a call, look me up, the Model team, Sotheby's International Realty, and I'd be more than thrilled to assist you. Where they can find you at hoteresidence.com as well. That's a good place but to find course, you. Of course, Hope Residence. <laughs> All right, thanks, Liz. We'll have you on again in 90 days and hopefully it will be as uh, great a report as this one. And something tells me I think it will be because the international, international stuff's about to come back, you know? So that's the next step. So uh, I guess the time to buy is a condo is now before that rush comes in and there's no more opportunities. So. Absolutely. I've sold, I, I had five condos in a building. I've sold four of them and wow. just one left. So awesome. that speaks volumes to me. Awesome. Well, congrats again. And thanks again for coming on with us. And well, we definitely look forward to having you on again really soon, uh, for thanks sure. For me. And uh, in the meantime, we'll check out the Leslie Modell uh, uh, Chardonnay. No, not Chardonnay. Chardonnay. No. no. Cab. no Cabernet. 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 <laughs> Cabernet. You the sure red. you're hitting red. the bottle, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is, Mike. We're, now we're going over to Mike. Mike got the bottle right there. He's got oh, a bottle. Oh, Mike, but you're yeah. too far Mike, away. Is that the, is that the Leslie Modell yeah, bottle? Is, Cabernet? I got, I got a bottle right here. I, this is actually a bottle from the winery I'm selling in Galen, uh, outside of oh, Galena, yeah. Illinois. Rocky Waters Winery. Wow. You should, you should bring out a Leslie Modell uh, brand. Hey, well. you know what? I like she that. She got 5.9 million. We'll name the winery after her. <laughs> We got 60,000 bottles of wine a year we'll produce in your name. Everything's for sale. Everything's like for that. sale. I like that. We got to navigate <laughs> a, a buyer for you. There you go. Please, please. That's 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 cheap for New York mining, right? It is. Yeah. Well, Especially Mike, over to you for your last thoughts, but tell us about your, your wine. Tell us real quick about that. Oh, yeah. So, no, I, I represent a winery. I mean, I got a referral from a, an agent down in Florida, and it, her girlfriend's parents own a winery in Galena, Illinois called wow. Rocky Waters Winery. Um, so they uh, they produce uh, 5,000 cases, 6,000 bottles of wine a year. And I mean, we're selling the building, the, the machinery, you know, the, the 112 acres. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's been fun. I mean, we had, uh, they have three properties, three buildings on the property. They have a 15,000 square foot main lodge. That's where the wine, uh, the tasting room is, souvenir shop. Uh, the manager's house is a nice log, uh, you know, rebuilt. It's only about 10 years old, but it's a log house and uh, probably about 3,000 square feet. And then they have what's called the fisherman's cabin that they rent out, kind of like an Airbnb. And uh, we had myself and five other couples there uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, we had a blast. We did a tasting. We went out of town and they still talk about it. So that's rockywaterswinery.com. You can find out uh, information there. Uh, but yeah, Rocky keep me in waters. mind, Rocky Great Waters. Yep, yep. And, but uh, when you're staying at the cabin, what was the name of the cabin that you stay at? They call it the Fisherman's Cabin because there's a pond on, cabin the on Rocky Waters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. There you go, Eric. I love it. It sounds kind so, of fun. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. So what's the reason they named it that? Is that why? What's yeah, the there's a little it? history behind it. Um, they were going to name it a, a bunch of different things, but um, the, the, what, that part of Illinois doesn't feel like Illinois. If you ever go to Galena, Illinois, uh, it's near uh, Davenport, Iowa. It's a western part of the state, very hilly. Uh, you know, Illinois is very boring and flat, but that part of the state's beautiful. Um, so that, that kind of went into their, their thinking. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, Chicagoland market, you know, keep me in mind, anybody, they have uh, thoughts, they want to know what's going on. We're usually the slower tail. So when the market's hot, we're on the tail end of it. The market tanks, uh, you know, we're, we're usually on the tail of that too. So right now the market's hot. I think the Chicago downtown market's a great time to buy. There's some great deals out there. A lot of people hit that panic button, like Leslie mentioned earlier, and people got out now. I think we, we will see people moving back in. But uh, LuxChicagolandHomes.com is our website, Lux, L-U-X-E, Chicagoland Homes. And uh, we have a lot of good content on there as far as the different neighborhoods and where to shop and uh, where to look. And they could search for homes there. But uh, we'd be glad to uh, help anybody out with their Chicagoland needs. Terrific. Well, thank you so much uh, for, for being on with us. And uh, obviously, you can find out all these guys at HopeResidence.com. Uh, Kevin, Mike. Leslie, you guys have been terrific today. We really appreciate having you guys on. I'm going to connect all you guys on an email. We're going to download the, download the full video of this on YouTube. I'll send you guys a copy of the full video as well. You can post on 
social media. Uh, I'm Eric Haas, director. We've been live on Facebook and our social media outlets, uh, as well as on Zoom, of course. Uh, thanks again for a great panel, and we definitely would love to have you guys on again, uh, you know, hopefully in 90 days with a great report and warmer weather for all you guys. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, looking like great things ahead here uh, for all three of you guys. So thank you so much for having, uh, for, for coming on with us and for being amazing panelists. We really appreciate it. Thank thanks, you, Eric. Eric. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great night. Thanks again. All right. Seeing Bye. you.